एवरीवन रोलिंग Thirteen is the unlucky number, and 2013 seems to have been just that for the automotive industry. There's been a lot of gloom and doom, and everybody grumbling about how slow it is. But when I look around here, I really can't understand why, because just look how diverse it is. Seriously, in our lineup for Car of the Year, we have a pure electric vehicle from Mahindra, and from the same manufacturer, we also have an example perfect for Indian ingenuity, which is the. Very to wipe. That's right, and we have had luxury car makers bring in compact luxury cars right behind you. And we have compact SUVs, right? Well, more compact if we're talking about the Eco Sport. And right next to that, we have the first diesel from Honda. And MUVs seem to be gathering steam too. So it's really diverse, loads of choice, lots to pick from. But at the end of the day, only one can be Car of the Year. If you want to find out what it is, watch on. Of all the cars that were launched in 2013, only 15 contenders have made it to the starting line for Car of the Year. Let's get to know them one by one. In 2013, Mahindra gave us a shocking hatchback. This is the E2O. and it has the double distinction of being mahindra's first car and the only electric passenger car in india this ev's 75 km range in the real world is ample for most people's daily commute this tiny two door hatch has decent space for four people and is pretty well equipped too well our next car is also mahindra but we are not so sure whether it's a saloon or a hatch what we do know is that mahindra's sub 4 meter version of the verito saloon is called the y its strong points are the spacious cabin frugal and capable diesel motor and robust suspension next up is hyundai's fifth hatchback for india underpinned by a stretched version of their next generation platform the grand i10 is a huge step forward for Hyundai. It has abundant space, impressive quality and thoughtful features. It rides beautifully and it drives fairly well too. Now let's step up to the luxurious compacts on hand. Starting with the Volvo V40 Cross Country. This is a hatchback that claims to be part SUV. However, without butch styling and four-wheel drive, it does struggle on this count. Although as a hatchback, it is striking to look at, it's comfortable on the inside, is packed to the gills with features, and is great fun to drive with strong diesel performance. Then we have the A-Class. which will never be thought of as your dad's mercedes or a chauffeur driven machine young and sporty with classy interiors and plenty of equipment the a class is a charmer finally we have bmw's entry level hatchback the 1 series true to bmw genetics it boasts of rear wheel drive and thara engineering its strong petrol and diesel engines and entertaining handling will make drivers smile since we are talking about premium there is a saloon that is aiming to create just that image this new octavia is bigger the interiors are more sophisticated than before and quality has seriously improved 
With a pair of capable engines on offer, the new Octavia has something for both. The enthusiast driver and the chauffeur driven. Coming down several notches, we have Honda's Amaze, which, despite its sub 4 meter size, delivers proper saloon like comfort and space, particularly in the back. Also, playing a starring role here is the new made for India ultra efficient 1.5 litre diesel engine. Competing in the Amazes segment is this the Chevrolet Sail. It is the saloon version of Chevy's Yuva hatchback. It has a smart design, a spacious cabin, a usable boot and really impressive ride quality. And it has a superb price tag. Now let's take a look at another Chevrolet, but this is an MPV. The Enjoy may be compact, but it is spacious and comfortable. It rides, steers and drives well. And the diesel engine is sufficiently powerful and tractable. In 2013, commercial vehicle manufacturer Ashok Leyland jumped into the passenger car market with their MPV, the Style. This reskin Nissan Ivalia has also stripped off a lot of its equipment. Its drivetrain has also been retuned for efficiency. Those on a tight budget are sure to appreciate the style's lower price point. But the style isn't the only badge engineered product. There is one more contender and this one is an SUV. Sure, this may be a badge engineered Renault Duster, but the Terrano has had extensive changes to the sheet metal. This makes sure that it looks like a Nissan. However, it is the redesigned interiors that give the Terrano's simple yet spacious cabin a more upmarket appeal. Then we have the smallest SUV of 2013. Ford's sub 4 meter SUV, the EcoSport, is a truly remarkable package. It has strong in your face styling, a range of competent engines, good ride quality, and engaging dynamics. Moving up several rungs, we have the Honda CRV. The CRV still has the agility of a car although it is less engaging to drive than before. The CRV still doesn't come with diesel, although the petrol motors do offer better efficiency and drivability. Finally, we have the Mercedes. The GL350 is Merck's grand seven-seater. The spacious, luxurious and butch SUV from Mercedes is more appealing and more affordable. And here are the people responsible for evaluating these cars. The Autocar Awards jury panel consists of five jurors. They include eminent personalities like Manvendra Singh Barwani. He is India's foremost automotive historian and car restorer. Manvendra represents India on the FIA's Historic Motorsport Commission. He has also been on the panel of judges at the prestigious Pebble Beach Concours de Elegance for the last two years running. Then there is Narain Karthikeyan. He put India on the world motorsport map when he became the country's first F1 driver. He was also the first Indian to compete at the inaugural Indian GP. Now Narain is raking in trophies in Auto GP. Then we have Shapur Kotwal, Deputy Editor, Autocar India. Shapur is at the forefront of the magazine's extensive road testing activities and oversees the test instrumentation and data acquisition. Shapur is amongst the most experienced of all road testers in the country today. Then we have Hormuz Sorabji. 
On average, Hormaz drives and evaluates over 80 different vehicles every year. And he has driven all sorts of vehicles, from tractors to Formula 1 racers. He is also a jury member for the World Car of the Year and Engine of the Year awards. And finally, our very own Renuka Kirplani. Renuka is a former rallyist and is a respected face in the Indian motoring circles. She has driven virtually every car in the Indian market and is also the only Indian jurist on the Women's World Car of the Year awards. She is also a jurist, World Car of the Year award and the Engine of the Year award. Before evaluating the cars, the jury members had to be briefed by KPMG. That's because the voting process is designed and audited by KPMG to pick out the most outstanding car from the list of contenders. Each jury member is given complete data on all the cars, including extensive V-Box test figures and fuel runs from 2013. With all that information on hand, the jury were ready to put the cars through the paces. So our test track was clearly no race track, but it was perfect for the job at hand. Bumps, gradients, corners and straights. We had everything required to size up these machines, except for a traffic jam. And Honda's compact saloon, the Amaze, was wowing the jury through all of it. In terms of practicality, it's fantastic because, you know, in a sub 4 meter length, really a very, very spacious cabin. It really eked out a lot of uh, space. But it was the one and a half liter diesel motor that was the major talking point. One never thought of Honda as a manufacturer of diesel engines, but they have really kept up the quality and their uh, performance with this amaze. I think really nice diesel engine, strong. The only thing about it is it's very noisy. So you hear it consistently in the car, which is you know, it's quite intrusive at times too, which is the one big downside for this. There were other disappointments too. Also interior, the I think it's very, very sparse and uh, not much you can say about. The quality is fine, but it's just the the way it's designed, it just looks very ordinary. Next up was Chevrolet's Saloon, the sale. It is quite an adept car with a tractable diesel motor and a spacious cabin. But it was having a tough time at the jury round. That's just the thing about this car, it's really not bad on power, it's okay on handling. But the point is, you know, it just feels so crude. It doesn't have refinement on any level, be it the engine, be it the way the interiors are. It just feels not in the segment it should be. But the saloon that probably had the toughest task was Skoda's new Octavia. After all, it had to match up and surpass its very successful predecessor. Skoda always make cars that are great value and this is no different. In fact, I think with this car they've stepped it up. So I really like the new styling of the car. It's, 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 it's very, um, you know, proportionate to its uh, uh, the size of the grille, the wheel arches and everything. I think I really like uh, the way the new Octavia looks. I like the interiors, I like the level of equipment that's there. Definitely feels premium, feels like a rich car. I think the car is a little soft sprung. I, I think I find that a lot of cars work. Otherwise, the car is really nice. I'm, I'm sure people sitting in the back seat would be enjoying their rides enough. Despite the slightly soft suspension setup for the diesel variant, the Octavia wasn't sloppy to drive. It always has a good DSG gearbox. So it's very, it's fun to going up and down the gears, it's very responsive. When you're driving hard on the limit, uh, it's quite responsive, quite uh, agile, so it's, it's not too bad actually. But there was something missing. That 
built like a tank feel that you were so used to and you expect that from the Octavia, that's missing. The jury members have trained their sights on the two MPVs. Let's see how the spacious and well-priced Chevrolet Enjoy fares. Can expect it to be a little cheap and cheery, and it is. It's cheap, but there's not too much to cheer about. It, it just about passes master, either on performance or the way it drives. While the Enjoy's 1.3-litre diesel motor proved adequate and the space was plenty, it didn't manage to impress the jury. It's all so badly put together. The, the, from the gear shift onwards, it's, uh, it's just, you know, typically Chinese made, I guess. And uh, it largely catered to the taxi segment, I'm thinking, uh, rather than, uh, you know, people buying it as a replacement for a, a Ertiga or whatever else. So, would Ashok Leyland's first ever passenger vehicle fare any better? It's very user friendly. I mean, this actually is the Valia which we know very well from Nissan. But I think uh, the way they've adapted it uh, for the Ashok Leyland brand is actually quite impressive. However, the jury found that this people carrier could become more people friendly. It looks like a bread box. But uh, apart from that, it's very functional. And uh, you know, the windows at the back, that's still a bit of a sore point, though they slide a bit, but really don't open much. But apart from that, really good. With the MPVs out of the way, it was time to focus on a hatchback. It's been tearing through the sales charts ever since its launch. Hyundai's Grand i10. This car actually is supposed to replace the i10, but it seems like a whole segment uh, above it. And uh, clearly they've packed in a lot of features. The new Grand i10, it's been designed and engineered in Europe. You can tell by a lot of the things. Fantastic quality of the interiors, really eye-opening, very comfortable seat, super driving position. While its diesel motor could be smoother, its performance was its biggest shortcoming. Performance-wise, uh, in, 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 it is a heavy car, definitely, much heavier than an i10. So, it is a little reluctant in uh, its performance when you want to really nip it up. The Dynamics 2 came under fire. So, it rides okay, but it's a bit soft and everything else. But, uh, I mean, uh, and it, it's kind of bouncy. It's too soft, maybe, you know, on the bumps it's... Uh, it has that boaty feel to it, which is not very nice. Meanwhile, the practicality of Mahindra's sub 4 meter vibe was being dissected. Boot space is decent, but the loading area is, is, is a difficult one. So, you know, with that narrow area to get things in is really a juggle. The vibe shares its frugal diesel motor with the Verito, but it did struggle uphill. And its spacious cabin was a little bit lacking. The interiors feel very lackluster. The steering feels extremely big. There's no steering adjust, so the steering feels high. The other Mahindra whizzing around the test track, the Mahindra Reva E2O, was completely charged up. In this environment, it's out of place, frankly speaking. Although, it, I mean, performance-wise, it is performing to the size, to its motor capacity. And surprisingly enough, air conditioning is, is really good. Although it's surprisingly drivable for everyday use, the minute you want that little bit of extra oomph, it's just not there. Very practical for city use. Uh, though I think dynamically, this car leaves a lot to be desired. Really in terms of Handling in terms of uh, you know going around corners, uh, this thing doesn't really feel uh, too planted. With its limited range and hefty price tag, the E2O's electrification drive, although noble, has limited impact. But hefty price tags are not stopping these luxury compacts from flying out of showrooms. BMW's 1 Series with its diesel motor created quite a stir at the jury round. 
know, it feels really tough, really very, very high. Uh, you know, the quality of the car is extremely high, and um, you know, there's a lot of many good things to say about the car. I'm very impressed with the with the with the with the ride, um, um, and the it's rear wheel drive, um, so it's a driver's car as well. And you know, there's a lot of nice features. Uh, seems very very strong engine. Although its awkward looks and cabin fell a bit short of expectations. I think disappointments are really the interior's a uh, bit of a letdown uh, in terms of it's, it's really not got a sense of occasion, you know, like the A class does. So, interior is definitely a bit of a letdown, and I think the price also is on the pricier side. The competition was intense as Mercedes's A class was right there in the fray. And it was proving to be very popular. It feels like a Merc all right. It looks fantastic. I really like the looks of the car. Uh, it looks very it looks really nice and from all angles. Really nice quality touches. It feels like a proper Mercedes and that's what the game's about, I think. But there were some compromises made. It's also very stiffly sprung. Um, nice on winding roads but a little bit uh, uncomfortable on, on bumpy roads like what we find in you know most most Indian cities. Engine needs a little more grunt. Um, it's too it's too how can I say no underpowered. Finally there was the Volvo. The quiet V40 cross country was rubbing the jury the right way. Nice handling car, got good power, uh, I think interiors, it's, it's just got everything. To my mind it beats both those cars, BMW and the Mercedes. I'm surprised this car is not only very well finished, it gives you a sense of, uh, you know, being there. I mean, it's, it's something that you do feel that you can connect to as far as the road is concerned, the Indian roads I mean. But I think where it lacks is the engine is a bit rough, uh, not very refined and it just doesn't have the driving dynamics of the 1 Series. So, a bit of a letdown there, but overall, yeah, pretty good package. So, of the 15 contenders, the electric vehicle, the compact, the saloons, and the luxury compacts were done going through the grind. Well, you've seen the contenders, you've met the jurors, you've heard what each jury member has to say about their picks in each segment. So you pretty much have a good idea here and I'm not going to say too much because I was on that jury too. Yeah, and you still have to tell us what you guys think about the SUVs. And you guys will get to see all that action next week when we show you all the contenders for SUV of the year, which also qualify for car of the year. So remember to vote in for your viewers' choice picks, but next week we'll also be bringing you the bike jury round. So stay tuned for all the action.